be defeated Getafe. We move on to react to Luis Enrique. He had some very, in my opinion, very shocking comments discussing Xavi in Barcelona in this new documentary, which was it's one of those documentaries that follows the team. Um, you know, the all or nothing. You know, um, actually, let me, uh, let me see what's the documentary called. Yeah, it's one of those Amazon Prime um, all or nothing sort of documentaries. And um, and uh, during those documentaries, PSG coach Luis Enrique described Xavi Hernandez's Barcelona side as a team that played long ball football like Ibar. Um, this was... Um, this was released after this was released recently and it followed the team during uh, during last season his first season in charge of um, PSG and we know PSG they took on Barcelona in the Champions League quarterfinal last season they lost that first leg in Paris 3 to 2 but they came back and they won that second leg 4-1 at the Olympic Stadium in Barcelona um, during the documentary he said, Barcelona aren't guaranteed to dominate games. They haven't in two seasons with Xavi. They aren't a dominant team, and they are not a good team defensively either. They defend with bodies, but they don't have quality in the defense. Um, and Luis Enrique, he doubled down on his opinion of Xavi Barcelona, even after they lost that first game at the Pac de France. It's a lie to say Barcelona was better were better, that's completely false. They played long balls. Ter Stegen broke the record for long passes. I think it was 24. They play like Ibar. It was all long balls. Call it the third man. Call it the third man if you're a fan of Shaggy. Shavi. Shaxi. Shaxi. I don't know what that means, but I think that's a typo. Um, but um, but yeah, so uh, we know Luis Enrique, he's former managed manager of Xavi and um uh, and yeah, and then, you know, it goes on in the documentary ahead of that return leg. Um, the documentary um, really focuses on Luis Enrique and how he, you know, he was encouraging Mbappe to, you know, work harder. You know, he was having one-on-one -on -one meetings with him and discussing why he needs him to press more. Um, he was telling Mbappe, you have to be a leader. You have to help us defend like a son of a you know what, lead by example, press, and will be a effing machine. Um, PSG did end up going on to win that second leg as well. Um, you know, a lot helped because of that red card that uh, Ronald Dorajo had, the, the denying of an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, and it completely changed the tie. Barcelona, they were up um, two goals at that point because they scored an early goal at home. So they were up two goals at that point. That red card happens, completely changes the game. And and PSG go on to get... And PSG go, go on to score four straight um, afterwards. And it just completely changes the game. And uh, ahead, ahead of the... Uh, Ahead of the release of this documentary, Luis Enrique said that tie against Barcelona was horrible, and he hopes that he never wants, to, never manages um, his former team again in his major career. He also dis discussed how Barcelona, um, um, you know, potentially inquired about uh, inquired to him about a possible return during the twenty twenty two. 23 season um, he said they called my agent um, I said to him ask them what happens if Xavi wins La Liga and Copa are they going to sack him I already knew the answer uh, 
And yeah, the documentary overall is really interesting. They, they it starts off from Luis Enrique's introduction. There's some interesting elements with Mbappe as well. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's yeah, but going back, you know, I do have to say the way he's slamming Barcelona style was really confusing. Cause by the way, this is a Xavi that I mean Luis Enrique that managed Xavi. Um, was his former manager and we saw you know some of the you know pre-game scenes before that game the hugging the positivity from Luis Enrique I have to say this is a little feel, feel a little bit backstabby to completely criticize the way um, the way that they go about it and by the way I do I did watch the PSG and Barcelona games both legs um, I don't remember exactly how especially that first leg went I have to say at the top of my head but I don't remember being Barcelona being as defensive as what Luis Enrique is making them out to be now look Barcelona definitely they weren't you know the tiki taka Pep Guardiola Luis Enrique way it was a little bit of a mix they had a little bit you know it's not also Hansi Flick way but they had that a little element of being a little bit direct um but they were still able to control games in possession and they weren't as heavy metal as Hansi Flick but they weren't as silky and as tiki taka centric as a Pep Guardiola play it was a little bit of a mix and match and you know, you know, I exact again, I don't remember exactly how that game went, but you're going away against PSG, you know, sometimes, you know, I think it is excusable to go long. And this again, you know, no this is not the Barcelona teams of the past as well that Xavi was managing this past season, you know. There was injuries, there was, you know, the financial issues. These are not Barcelona players that are, you know, you know, Barcelona usually has the best in class at every position. You know, that Barcelona team are far from that. You know, you have Lewandowski in that team that didn't even have a great that season, that past season. Yeah, you could say, that, you know, he, you know, if he's not the best in class, he's still up there, I guess. But apart from that, you know, you know, you had Kunde. And then, you know, there was a there was a little bit of a younger Lamin Yamal, which it doesn't get much younger, but Lamin Yamal was also involved in that team. But again, it was a Rafinha team that was pretty poor. Sergio Roberto was playing in midfield. Gunduan, we know he's not he wasn't the same player that he was at City. Frankie De Jong, he's one of those players, yes. And then Jao Cancelo playing left back. I do Jules Kunde is one of them. Ter Stegen is one of those players. Jao Cancelo on his day, he could be one of those. But again, you know, Barcelona team and the team in the past is world class players at every single position. And Xavi wasn't afforded that opportunity. In fact, you look at across the platform, this is a uh, Luis Enrique. He did have the likes of an Mbappe, a Vitinha, Fabian Ruiz. We know what Fabian Ruiz did in the European Championship. A Nuno Mendes, a Lucas Hernandez, a Marquinhos, who yes hasn't, who's not quite at that level, but that he was in the past. But he still provides the experience, the leadership. Um, you have Donnarumma. You know you have players like Ugarte on the bench, um, like Ugarte, Zaire Emery. Um, on the bench, Milan Skriniar. So, I just think it was a little disrespectful, um, a little, not snakish, but a little disloyal to someone. You know, you, you know, you're supposed to have that sensitivity and soft spot to to your players. And yes, you know, some of these things can be. You know, this is just him talking to his team and all that, but. Um, he's well aware that there's cameras and that they're doing this documentary in us, and I I do I had I do want have to say, with these, you know, all or nothing sort of documentaries, do the managers have a you know, have final say in what goes out? You know, do the managers, um, if you know, you know, like I've watched the Arsenal one, the uh, City ones in the past. Let's say Mikel Arteta, he wanted to hold a team meeting with his Arsenal players. Could he say this team meeting is just for the team, no cameras in here? Could they do that? Do they have that? Do they have that opportunity, or is it full out access no matter what? Um, because again, if that's the case, then you know that is a little bit rough. Because again, Luis Enrique, he's 
you know, he's talking to his team in these situations and, you know, it's, he can't pinch his mouse in front of his team. Um, he's going to say his opinion. He's going to, you know, he's going to say um, uh, what he thinks of the opposition. So who knows? I do think it was, a, it was pretty harsh, though.